ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of The Cider Drinker. We've got a big boy today going back to Kent to Herne Hill Cider Company to try out another one of their offerings. This time it is a bottle of their dry cider. And if you can see on the front of the bottom on the bottle there, yes, this is an 8% cider. So it's definitely one of the bigger boys out there. Uh, so yeah, Herne Hill, I've only had um, one other of theirs uh, in their range, but they do have a whole host of uh, different sizes that they do. Obviously they do uh, different sorts like dry, medium, sweet and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, I bought this while I was obviously uh, visiting, um, visiting Kent and everything, and uh, yeah, it was just a little cider shop there that I bought uh, a few bottles from. And uh, yeah, this was one of them. So this is a traditional Kentish cider, small batches made in Herne Hill between Canterbury, Faversham and Whitstable basically visited all of those, so might as well. Only with apples from our own and neighbouring local orchards, no preservatives or additives, and it is bottle conditioned. So, um, could potentially be a lively one, who knows? I um, have had it uh, just sitting in the fridge for a little bit, so it should be absolutely fine. And as you can see, it does come in 500 millilitre bottles like this. So, yeah. Um, Naturally, with Kentish apples, they tend to be more on the uh, quite acidic side. So the fact that this is a dry cider as well, I would imagine it's going to be, well, pretty sharp and pretty, you know, pretty acidic, pretty astringent. But we'll see. Stranger things have happened. So as a sport condition, I'm going to be a little bit careful opening this uh, bottle up just in case, because I have had a fair few near misses recently. So I really don't want to uh, have a repeat of that. But thankfully, it was OK. All right. Yeah, that pretty much that pretty much smells exactly as I thought it was going to smell. It's um, got subtle citric hints coming off it, so there's a bit of a uh, bit of lemon, a um, bit of lemon there, maybe a touch of orange, but generally, it just smells like it's going to be tart. It's going to be sharp. Now there is uh, sediment in the bottom there. Obviously, it is bottom bottle condition, so let's get it all in. Adds to the flavour, adds to the colour as well. I do find so. Well, there we go. This is it in the uh, this is it in the glass. Uh, I don't know if it's meant to be a completely still cider, but that's how it's come out. No carbonation there. Uh, as you can see, totally opaque. Can't see you guys through there at all. So no messing about has gone on with this cider at all. And uh, yeah, the colour's very nice. It's um yeah very light. Um, uh, well yeah light straw colour. I mean, it looks a little bit darker on the camera there, but yeah, that looks um yeah really nice. Almost a bit bit of a uh, bit lemony in appearance to be fair. So what's it smell like in the glass? Yeah, and it actually does smell like um like a, a lemon squash almost. Maybe even I'm um, getting a maybe even like a, a bitter lemon uh, drink or something. But yeah, this does smell sharp. It smells like it is going to be very dry, very very acidic. All the all the qualities that you normally get from a, a Kentish made cider. Yeah, this smells like a good one. So let's see what it tastes like, shall we? Cheers, everyone. Yeah, eight percent dry. Let's dive in. Cheers. That is definitely dry, but I have had drier. Although the aftertaste, okay, the aftertaste is um is quite interesting. Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is um this is definitely on the dry side. It has just got a subtle touch of sweetness just on the initial taste, which uh, just gives it a nice little bit of a balance, stops it from just being completely bone dry. Not a huge fan of those types of ciders, you can get them, um, and some people really like them, but for me, they're not, not my sort of thing. I do like things with a little bit of balance, and that little touch of sweetness just uh, gives it a little bit of an edge. But apart from that, it is dry, sharp, uh, a little bit astringent, but more more tangy and zesty. You're getting those um, citric notes coming through um, on the taste as well as the nose. So you're getting like um, lemon, a touch of um, touch of orange as well. And um, yeah, the aftertaste though, although short, there is a subtle touch of a tannic presence there. Yeah, it's got a reasonably light body behind it as well probably more, probably like medium body i'd say so it kind of 
it's quite refreshing. I can see this being a really good palate cleanser um, after a meal, just like to, you know, wash it, wash it down and everything. Yeah, I can definitely see that uh, going down well. But yeah, there is a nice, um, almost like a bready sort of uh, aftertaste, a, su a very subtle one uh, just coming through as well on the finish. So yeah, this is nice. It's refreshing. I mean, on um, days like this, when it's been like 26, 27 degrees, this can go uh, right, you know, down a treat. I mean, it doesn't taste of 8% personally, but yeah, it is 8%. So you've got to watch it as a bit of a danger cider. So let's get a final taste for a final verdict, shall we? Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That's a really nice, that's a really nice and well-made dry cider there. Um, yeah, I've, as I say, I've only tried uh, one, one else of theirs, of their range. I've not tried uh, the other sort of uh, blends that they do. So like, you know, the, the medium dry and the sweet and everything. So I'm not sure how they are. But this is a really well-made dry cider. It's got those lovely um, dry Kentish cider characteristics, but it is just nicely balanced and uh, makes it for a, quite a refreshing and easy-going cider, despite it being 8%. So, yeah, definitely recommend this. I mean, I can't remember, um, can't remember how much I paid for it. It was quite a while ago now. And I would imagine it is probably hyper-local to the Kent area. But if you are around the Faversham, Whitstable sort of area, um, yeah, I can't, I can't even remember what the name of the... Um, Cider place was. I'll um, pop a link down to it once I find out below. So yeah, definitely go in there and uh, check it out. It does all sorts of um, other things. It's part of like a little complex. It's got like a, I think there's a hairdresser's there, I think. But anyway, I'm going off a tangent now. You want to know what the rating is. So yeah, for a final verdict, I'm going to go and give Herne Hills Dry Cider a 7 out of 10. Yeah, very just nice, easy going dry cider. And it's, yeah, it's just got some lovely flavours. And I do recommend you go out and give it a go. So, there you go, that's another episode of the Cider Drink for you guys. I hope you liked it, and as usual, I will be back with another delicious and tasty cider soon. Until then, well, hopefully this uh, nice weather is going to last, so I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Cheers. <laughs>